Okay, let's get inside. What's up everybody? Alan here from Delaware Limo. So welcome to our 2017 31 passenger turtle top. Beautiful bus. You have the movable wall in the rear. So right now it's actually configured in the 27 passenger configuration. So you have a little bit of luggage space in the back. But you can actually move this wall back a little bit and then four more drop down seats come back there. So you have 31 seats in total. But real quick, I wanted to mention, um, if you're a newer operator or you've been in business for a while and you're kind of questioning if you want to get a party bus or get into shuttles, well, this video is for you. Uh, hopefully I can answer some of your questions and concerns that you might have to be able to give you a little bit insight of what's like owning a bus and what it takes to own a bus. So right off the bat, I wanted to get into the pros of having shuttles and party buses. The number one thing that I like to think about when it comes to having the buses is your profit margins are going to be a lot higher than when it comes to sedans and SUVs. When it comes to sedans and SUVs, your hourly rate might be the market rate, but the cost of operating those vehicles is so high because of the amount of miles that you put on it, the amount of wear and tear that you put on those vehicles, and the amount of business that you do in those vehicles. Don't get me wrong, it's a great business, but when it comes to profit margin, there's a lot of room that you can get when it comes to having buses, limo buses, and, and larger vehicles in general. And not only that, but the, the rates that you can get for these larger vehicles are a lot higher than you might get for sedans and SUVs. The second pro that you get with having larger vehicles, shuttles and party buses, is that you get access to a completely different client base. So for example, you might get access to corporate events. So you currently might already be driving a lot of corporate clients um, or even retail clients going to the airport, doing black car service, but you might not be servicing larger scale events that they're having, whether it's going to dinners, whether it's going to conventions, having these buses and shuttles and party buses, you have access to more of these types of clients, which in turn can also grow your current business that you have with sedan, SUV, van, and limousine. Not only that, but you also get access to different types of clients, whether it's wedding retail clients huge business the wedding business is a huge business that people build their complete their whole business off of um, having the buses shuttles party buses you're able to access the wedding clients which is a great avenue to go into if you're in that retail space another benefit is actually having a little bit more diversification so i like to be diversified in our business we do a lot of black car sedan and suv work limousines vans but the thing is, anybody can start a sedan and SUV business. Your competitors have sedans and SUVs. Everybody has sedans and SUVs. You're competing with Uber, you're competing with Lyft, you're competing with taxis. So having these larger vehicles that have a much higher barrier of entry gives you a little bit more of a competitive advantage and diversifies where all your business is coming from. So you're not just, not all your revenue is coming from a single place. And finally, similar to diversification, you build yourself a moat. So what is a moat? You have your castle, which is your business, and then you have the moat around your castle so people can't get in. Since the barrier of entry is that much higher, you kind of build a moat around yourself so it's harder for your competitors to compete with you. If they're not scaled up to the, to the place where they can get these buses, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to enter that market if you have these vehicles. It's not all pros. There are also cons to having these larger vehicles. I know a lot of operators that actually don't get into the buses because of the extra complexity and extra cost that come in to getting these vehicles. So real quick, I wanna go over some of the cons that you might have with getting the buses. So first, and the most obvious one, is the cost of the buses. So the cost of the buses are gonna be a lot higher than you're used to. When it comes to sedans and SUVs, you might be spending 30, 40, 50, 60,000 bucks. But with a bus, you might be spending anywhere upwards of 100, 150, 200, and even when you get to the large coach buses, quarter million, half a million dollars. So the cost of the actual vehicles themselves are a lot higher. But when it comes to the cost of the vehicles, that's not even the most expensive part. Or at least when you're getting started, that's not the most expensive part. Insurance is another completely different ball game when you get into the buses. When you're doing interstate travel or uh, you're going from state to state with your sedans, SUVs, you might only need $1.5 million coverage on your vehicles. Well, when you move to getting into buses, that coverage now needs to go from 1.5 to $5 million coverage, not including the hired auto, not including all the other things that you might need to pay for. So you purchasing that first bus 
you have to increase your insurance from first 1.5 to 5 and that doesn't include the cost of the insurance on the actual bus so getting your first bus might cost you 30 40 50 thousand dollars just to get your first bus on the road depending on your history quick story when we first started thinking about getting into a bus a few years ago we found a bus we thought it was a great price we we're like it was upwards of 60 thousand bucks this is pre-pandemic pre-inflation we're like okay 60 thousand bucks for a party bus that sounds great until we approached our insurance company we we're like hey how much will it cost to get a bus on the road? And they quoted us like $36,000 for the year or something like that. And again, that doesn't include all the fees for the regulations, DOT, all that good stuff. So something to consider when you're thinking about getting into buses. One thing to note when it comes to insurance, history is gonna be super huge. So if you're a newer operator, you've just been in business for just a few years now, keep in mind that getting insurance for buses is gonna be pretty difficult. So speak to a really good broker. We use TIB insurance. But speak to a really good broker they'll be able to help you out and see what's possible for your company and the age of your company and the history of your company so just something to keep in mind there another thing to keep in mind is the regulations so the level of complexity when you go from sedan to suv to buses is that much more so now you become federally regulated you have all the dot rules applied to you fmcsa all the carrier regulations now apply to you driver logs drug testing, all these different things. So make sure your operation can handle all the extra complexity that comes with having buses and having CDL drivers. So the final thing to consider is the maintenance involved when it comes to having buses. Everything when it comes to maintaining a bus is that much more expensive. Your AC goes out, that's 2,000 bucks. Your brakes need to be changed, that's 1,000 bucks. It's not gonna be 80 bucks for oil change. It's probably gonna be $200 for oil change. My recommendation, if you can afford it, buy something a little bit newer that you don't have to worry about as much. So for example, we purchased an older bus, a 2012 F550 Super Duty limo bus. Great bus, don't get me wrong, I love it. But as soon as we got that bus, we had to fix a whole bunch of things on it. The AC wasn't working, we had leaks in the roof, we had to replace some brakes, we had to do a whole bunch of different things. All in total, it cost us probably about $10,000 to just get that bus mechanically ready when you're purchasing something older it might actually be more beneficial for you again to purchase something newer yes that cost might be a little bit higher whether it's 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars more but when it comes to cash flow nothing kills cash flow than having to spend ten thousand bucks of repairing a bunch of stuff on your bus if you still want to buy some buses here are two things that i recommend in order for you to be comfortable in purchasing these buses and building that part of your business. I recommend having enough cash flow to be able to afford these buses. So what I mean by that, make sure that your current business, your sedan, SUV, limousine, van, whatever business that you're already operating is profitable. Make sure you're making money on that business. Make sure it's doing well enough that you can afford risking spending tens of thousands of dollars a year on repairs and regulations and fees, insurance, make sure that at least that part of your business is good in order to be able to support starting a new portion of your business. Expect at least $30,000 or more extra costs per year, if not 40, $50,000 extra costs per year for having a bus and make sure that your business can support it. Another thing you could do is actually first to have the business. That'll help you be able to get into the shuttle and the party bus business. Your competitors, or if you have larger operators near you that have party buses and shuttles, they have the vehicles already. And if you're getting the calls for these vehicles, you could potentially contract out that work to them. Obviously make sure they have the proper insurances, you get the COI, uh, certificate of insurance, but that's a great way for you to kind of get introduced into the business and see what type of volume that you might get for having these types of clients. If you have that, then you'll be able to project a little bit better. Okay, I need to get this size bus, or we need to get this size party bus. It helps because then you don't have to buy a bus right off the bat. You kind of have a little bit of a better idea what the business is gonna look like, what those type of clients want, and it kind of gives you just a better picture before you actually take that leap into getting those buses. So that when you're ready, and you're ready to purchase the buses and you're ready to take on the business you'll be able to hit the ground running my opinion is if you can handle the cost of the buses if you know what type of business you're going to get if you think you can get the clients and you want to get into the business 
If you have all those bases covered, then go ahead, get the bus, get the party bus, and make that money. Make that money, baby. Make that money. Hey, hey, hey.